Hey y'all, I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and if you've ever needed to do some complex modeling, say punch out a star from a cube, you may have found that that modeling is pretty difficult to pull off. Thankfully, Blender has a modifier that makes modeling like that significantly easier, and it's called the Boolean modifier. So let's cover everything the Boolean modifier can do in five minutes or less. Let's get started with a fresh cube and add in the Boolean modifier. In order to actually use that modifier though, we do need to add in another object. So let me add in the sphere and place it on the top right hand corner to show off the modifier's effects. Now we can play around with those settings. On the cube's boolean modifier, let's select the sphere object with the eyedropper. You can also choose from a list of objects in the scene if you click into the box and select the dropdown. Once the sphere is chosen, if we hide that sphere, you can see that the cube has the sphere's faces cut into it because the modifier is currently set to difference. Now when difference is selected, the target mesh, in this case our sphere, is subtracted from the modified mesh, in this case our cube, meaning that all of the mesh on our cube that is outside of the sphere will remain unchanged, but the part that intersects with the sphere is removed in order to add in those sphere faces. If we change the modifier from difference to union, you can now see that the sphere is added to the cube. The actual sphere is still hidden, but when you union two objects together, the target mesh is added to the modified mesh and any interior faces are removed. Which is why, when we switch into the wireframe, the inside part of the sphere and the corner of the cube were removed as the two objects are joined. And since we're using a modifier, you can continue to reposition the sphere as needed until you're ready to apply the changes. Finally, we have the intersect setting, which keeps only the inside portion of the intersection of the modified mesh and the target mesh, and everything outside of that intersection is removed, giving us just this little sliver of the sphere here. While the Boolean modifier does work for a single object, we can also change the type to work with a collection and have a single modifier add an entire collection's worth of objects to our cube to create more complex shapes. So if I remove the sphere and change the type to collection, I can choose my robot collection that I set up for the video. When I do that though, the intersect option on the modifier makes the cube disappear. But let's enable the collection and show how this works. When enabled, you can see a very blocky robot, and each of the pieces are just another cube or cylinder object with no modeling done to them, just some slight scaling and rotation. So if I change the modifier now to be union, all of those pieces in that collection are added to the base cube. And if I apply the modifier and tab into edit mode, you can see that all of those pieces are now joined together into a single linked mesh, giving us a base robot mesh without doing much more than adding a bunch of different objects into the scene and scaling them down. Depending on the complexity of your mesh, when you use the Boolean modifier, there are a few options for determining how Blender will calculate that Boolean. Those are called the solver options, and we're going to address them, though you may never need to tweak them. So we'll start with the algorithms and then get into the real options. Blender has two algorithms here. We have fast and exact. The fast algorithm just uses a simple formula to offer the best performance. But while it's the best performance, if you have any overlapping geometry, the algorithm will not support that. Meanwhile, the exact solver uses a much more complex algorithm to provide the best results and has support for overlapping geometry, though it is much slower. Again, that speed is determined by the complexity of your mesh. Now, each of these algorithms has a solver option to discuss. The exact algorithm has the hole tolerant and self options, but only hole tolerant is present when you're using the collection type. Hole tolerant optimizes output for non-manifold geometry at the cost of increased computational time, meaning the algorithm will take longer to actually figure out the Boolean operation. Now, if like me, you don't know what non-manifold geometry is, it's essentially any geometry that can't exist in the real world, like edges that don't belong to any face or a single face with no depth like a plane. Basically, if you can't 3D print it, it's non-manifold. The self setting that appears when we switch back to the object type correctly calculates when one or both of the objects have self interactions. This option does again make things slower though. The fast algorithm only has a single solver option, which is the overlap threshold. This sets the maximum distance between two faces to consider them as overlapping. So whether you wanna make some complex modeling decisions or build things very, very quickly, the Boolean modifier is a fantastic tool to do just that. All right, y'all, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more, consider liking the video, subscribing, and maybe checking out the modifiers playlist that's currently on the screen if you want to learn more about Blender's modifiers. Either way, thanks again for watching. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and I will see you guys in the next one.